we are recording. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? I would like to add a, a quick one right at the beginning um, about the potential of Walden. We talked about this a bit before, the potential of Walden joining, um, just to get everybody's sense of whether that's something that we should uh, encourage or proceed with or, or what have you. Okay. Next paper. Okay. Well, well, yeah, we'll, we'll, have an, we'll have an item to, to discuss it in a moment. Um, okay, hearing no other additions or changes to the agenda, um, let's move on to uh, public. I, actually, you know what? No, I, I, I do have another one. Um, I have some, um, some bills that we have to pay. We'll do that after the discussion of Walden. I'm sorry. Um, any public comment on items that are not on the agenda? Okay, hearing no public comment, moving on to uh, Walden. Um, I was approached, or I, I got a call over the weekend, I only got the, the voicemail message today, um, about the possibility of Walden joining. They had a select board meeting last night, so I didn't get this in time, but um, Michael, I heard your, um, your vote of interest. Any other thoughts, Michael, or anyone? Yeah, well, oh, I'm sorry. Were you asking me or someone? Yeah. That? Well, you you or anybody else. Well, one comment I'll make is that um, Walden has a Rex substation located in it, um, and um, for a few other network reasons, I think it's um, possibly a strategic town for us, and they're hesitant to join the NEK CUD, but they need someone, so, and they tie in really well with Cabot, so I, I think we should support it if they're interested. Yeah, the other, Jeremy, I talked I talk to Lori Agustiniak, who's um, part of the CCA here in Cabot and who lives in Walden, and asked her about it, and I, I got some reluctance and weirdness a little bit about that, um, but I let her know, so I don't know where you know, some of the, the people who've been been talking and expressing interest, but I think it makes a lot of sense too. Um, so. Okay. Any other thoughts about Walden one way or the other? Is there, uh, maybe I should say, is there any reason why we shouldn't go with them? I mean, aside from the um, ever creeping larger requirement for a quorum and that sort of thing. I mean, we, we needed 10 for tonight, which which we got soon enough, but any, so, so my hearing kind of general silent consensus that we should kind of just see what they want to do. All right, uh, I will, I will take that. Not, not hearing any sort of major objections or whatever. I will, I'll give them a call back tomorrow and see what the plans are. But, but Jeremy, I do. This is Ken. I do yep. think you might want to have a kind of, kind of a checklist with regards to what we're looking for or what some maybe threshold um, attributes are. You know, Michael mentioned that they they might fit well with within our, you know, they have assets that might fit well within the system. That's great. But if we could, if we could maybe a little bit objectively prior to the next town coming in, identify what it is that, that is consistent with our build out, that I think that's going to be helpful. Do you have any suggestions for criteria that we should be looking at in particular, or just ask them to make the case? Yeah, I, they're, they're not, I can't word them very well, but a lot, but some of it's going to be system. In other words, well, part of it relates to our relationship with Washington Electric. If we firm up that relationship and they have significant Washington Electric um, distribution um, geography, that would be one. So it would keep us from going, you know, south because I don't think Washington Electric goes much further south than Roxbury. Um, anyway, so that that was that's one of them. Um, and, I, and and maybe something about ex their relationship to other CUDs if they if they're geographically close to an existing one, I think we might want to be asking some 
that makes sense. It's just a starting, I have to get it some more thought, but I, I think God could give it that thought next couple months. The other one I have, the, um, the, the, I don't know if I could have included that or not, but, you know, we could use that as a factor, given that it's more expensive, the less dense it is. No the other thing is, I'm sure. No, I was just going to say it doesn't have to be, but it was another, another possibility. Any other thoughts? Jeremy? Yeah, Michael. Yeah? Yep. Um, the, the other thing is there are very few potential expansion towns left. Um, the ones the ones that border us are either Waitsville, Champlain Valley, telecom towns or AC fiber towns or NEKCUD towns or Lamoille County towns. There's very few left that haven't joined a CUD that border us. Um, Stowe and Waterbury are two that are still possible. And I generally am not inclined to either of those, but you know, if they apply, we should consider them on, sort of on the basis of Ken's uh, criteria. But I don't think we're going to have that many more applicants. And I think Walden has been on a tightrope for about a year thinking about which one they wanted to join, if any, because they weren't very active about it. Is, is there somebody on the phone that wants to say anything? I, I see a caller one. Uh, Jeremy, this is Alan. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Alan. Go ahead. Okay, great. Um, I came in just a few minutes late, so I hope I'm not, I hope I didn't miss something. But it seems to me one of the things we want to consider is whether there are any providers already operating within a town that is also asking to join us as a CUD. Um, that seems to me a really important consideration. And what made me think of it was the example of Stowe, because Stowe already has several carriers who I think are providing pretty high-speed internet there. But it's something we ought to know before we uh, make a decision about whether to, to add another town to our roster of responsibilities to get high-speed internet everywhere in the town, too. Fair enough. Uh, Siobhan? So Walden, I'm looking at a map. Walden is next to Hardwick and Danville are aren't they in one of the other like the NEK one yeah. are, so do yeah. we know why they are thinking about us rather than they're they're typically associated with Cabot in a lot of ways um mm -hmm. but they must be associated with Danville I mean they yeah you know it makes sense to be in one or the other my actual worry is that they aren't in one or the other they should be in one or the other but. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Anything else on Walden? Okay. Um, let's see. Moving on to some bills to pay. I I will I will forward you the invoices um, at some point uh, later tonight. Uh, we got an invoice from Peter Blum. Let me go and find that. That was to do the work, <clears throat> the drafting of the uh, wireless application. And that is in the amount of $5,387.50, $538,750. And that was uh, um, approved up to $6,000 by the executive committee a week and change ago, a week ago Friday. Um, and then I have um, $108, I believe it is, for the LinkedIn resumes that we got. You pay per resume, and I set it as close to um, $100 as I could. Um, unfortunately, it was almost totally a bust. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that more in, the, uh, in that agenda item about uh, the executive director. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, who, what else am I looking at? Uh, Jeremy Matt also uh, submitted his his monthly um, his monthly stipend for the clerk stuff that we we have been paying him. 
Um, and then a question about, um, oh, actually, you know what? Uh, not a question. I have a note here for myself. Um, so we we submitted the um, we submitted Fred's invoice and deliverables, and we're just waiting to hear back from uh, waiting to hear back from DPS in terms of uh, um, the broadband innovation grant, and we'll have that ready to go. Um, Fred has another invoice though that will be <clears throat> coming due for the wireless work, the wireless study was 22-ish thousand, as I recall. Um, I have not opened the bank account. Uh, I haven't looked at the balance lately. Were we going to wait until we get the 100,000? I mean, we, we made his contract contingent on the 100,000. So were we going to wait until we received that to write that check? We may have enough cash in the bank. It would be close. Any? But then what if we don't get it? It's what's well, our, I mean. Are we guaranteed that? Uh, yeah, well, we I, getting, there will be hell to pay if we don't get it. <laughs> okay, then, yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem with <laughs> Well, I think if the, if the conditions that you uh, had with him is it was contingent, then uh, we should stick to that. He agreed to it. Okay. All right. You never know Not if only if it come up. Okay, David? Yeah, why why haven't we gotten the hundred k from the state? Seems a little weird. Um, it's all, as I understand it, it's all like the federal rules and encumbrances that go along with with doling out that money. Uh, we we had to su submit different documentation than we had to for the broadband innovation grant. So we had to submit yeah. a uh, what a W nine. Correct. Um, yeah. And they okay. had and they had to know about you know what our you know what last year's income was and these sorts of things so i as as far as they've told me they have all the information that they need from us to proceed so as as far as i know they're working through um whatever sort of bureaucracy and process that they've got on their side but we should should be seeing it soon okay so um i'm going to move um i'm going to move that we uh, approve the payment of Peter Blum's invoice for $5,387.50 and um, my forthcoming request for reimbursement in the amount of uh, not to exceed $108 for the LinkedIn job advertisement. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Yeah. Um, I, I think – whether we told Inter Isle it was contingent or not, um, that hundred thousand dollars has no, no bearing on their work. It, it wasn't like the BIG where they had to produce ex acceptable submission for the department before the money would be released. If we have it in the account, we should probably pay them. Okay. So I wonder if we should amend it to include that one as well. Or if you can wait. Anyone? If you can wait one minute, I will just go and look and tell you what our balance is. Yeah, that, that's a good idea. Okay, so if you can, so if you can st stand by, we won't have to have any sort of contingency plan. Um, while, while he is looking that up, I would just like to point out that there, in my short tenure on this board, there are, have already been a couple of opportunities that have come up rather last minute that required cash to take advantage of. Um, and so, you know, keeping some cash on hand for such opportunities is probably wise. Agreed. But that 100000 is overdue. We should see it any day now. Okay. So I'm looking at a balance of $29,449.50. Oh. 15 cents, I'm sorry. And so then minus um, Jeremy Matz. Um, st uh, stipend, the LinkedIn reimbursement, and um, Peter Blum's five thousand three hundred. I think we would have, we'll, we'll, we'll have enough to pay twenty two thousand. So, shall I just write? Not write much it? left over. I, I have uh, a calculator open. If you want to list out the amounts, sure. Um, okay, two nine four four nine fifteen dot fifteen. That's for our current balance. Minus 108, 
minus 5387 and 50 cents. And let me look up Jeremy Matt's invoice. Stand by. Um, invoice, hold on. $300. How much does that leave us, Chuck? What, what, what was the amount on the inner aisle? Uh, I, I, I think it was 22 even. Let me. Okay, if it's 22 even, that would leave us with $1,653.65. Okay. Why don't, we, why don't we advance him half of it? Okay. Thoughts? Anybody? So it's a twenty thousand two hundred twenty dollars. I think it, uh, uh, paying half would be wise, but we don't want to bank our bank account. To be, sorry, with the with the updated oh, amount paying in in whole would leave us with three thousand four hundred thirty three and sixty five cents. Okay, and and as I'm as I'm looking at this, there is also an outstanding invoice to um, NRTC, which I, I'm still waiting on some clarification about. But there's yeah, there's at least five thousand dollars going there. Do you have any idea when you're going to get that clarification? Um, let's see. I think I asked when, when did I ask David? Like last week beginning of last week yep. um, so I don't know I mean we, we, we could probably pay the we could probably pay the five thousand dollars and then sort out the you know the second invoice we got which I wasn't expecting to get um, we, we, we may have been misbuilt is what is what I'm saying and I'm trying to we're trying to sort that out um, so we would if we if we sent Fred a check for half then that would still give us a buffer to pay the the five thousand for um, NRTC. I, I move to amend the motion to advance inter aisle an even ten thousand dollars towards what we owe them. Second it. Second. Okay, there's been a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? I think it's a reasonable step. Okay, um, so we have an amendment on the table to amend the original motion to add a uh, 10,000 uh, initial payment to inter -Isle. Again, hoping that we're gonna get the $100,000 rather soon to pay the remainder. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor of the amendment, sig signify by saying aye. 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 All right, aye. if there are any opposer that would like a roll call on that, let me know. Okay, motion passes unanimously. Thank you. The original motion now is to pay, um, to reimburse me for the $108, not to exceed for the LinkedIn ad, $5,387.50 to Peter Blum, and $10,000 to Interisle as the first nearly half of the outstanding invoice. Any further discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. 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 Anybody like a roll call for that? Okay, motion is unanimous and passes. Thank you very much. I will get those out uh, probably tomorrow. Okay, moving along, let me get back to my agenda. So the next item for the agenda is a subcontractor policy subcontractor policy I sent to you uh, earlier today. I got a couple of uh, couple of suggestions, one from uh, Jerry Diamantides, who's not with us tonight. He suggested to take items, um, kind of modified his suggestion, and I took items two and three under requirements, and I made them an A and a B under one, so it was more of a stylistic formatting. Um, and then I, I added another bit to number one, um, just thinking about the different sorts of subcontract subcontracting that might happen. And in number one, I have a line that says, all contractors shall disclose any and all subcontractors and consultants, quote, subcontractors. And I added a, a phrase here, material to their contracted work. 
to the CV Fiber, Fiber Governing Board. So um, some of this language um, was borrowed from um, a policy that Ray sent to me, um, and I thought that that was uh, that was pretty good. I did get some feedback saying uh, they disagreed with portions of it and thought that we should go more with, um, let me go back, more with like the language that we did with the broadband innovation grant. And I don't, I don't have that feedback in front of me. So the broadband innovation grants, I'm going to paste the, the quote into the chat. And if it looks like we should keep this shorter, something more like what I just posted into the chat. If we should do that instead, we can certainly modify this and take a crack at it next meeting. Um, otherwise, I'm happy to hear any feedback that folks have. Yeah, Siobhan. So what somebody else proposed was that we do just this language that you pasted into the chat instead of what was in the draft that you sent us? I, I think to, to substantially replace it with something like that. Okay, I'm not in favor of that. I like the one that has been drafted. Um, I prefer it. Yeah, I agree with Smith. Well. So David. do I. Well, I, I think this is a little, my, my comment was a couple of them. One of them, is we should have a contracting policy of which there's a subcontracting element to it as opposed to focusing just on subcontractors. And I think it needs a little more work than this. And then I took exception to the um, the clause regarding somebody who was a CUD disciplined person never being able to get a contract. I don't think that's needed. And I think it may open us up to some issues later on, but um, you guys, you know, I don't wanna do things in the heat of the night, but um, I think we ought to be careful when we do those kinds of language. So, so I, I I don't think we would be a, a, adopting it, not notwithstanding the the date I put at the end there. I don't think we're adopting this tonight, but I would like a, like us to consider this as like a first read. So if there are edits that we have or any other feedback that I I can incorporate, I would be happy to hear them. Michael. Um. I read it really carefully, and my first impulse was to edit it, amend it, and um, I amended it the best I could, but ultimately I wasn't happy with it. I, I think it opens up a bunch of vulnerabilities for us. Um, it also is overly um, regulatory for us. I mean, there, there are circumstances where there will be contractors who have subcontractors that are that, that we don't really need to be reviewing and and it's just adding more encumbrance on the board and on the contractors and um, I know the initial impulse um, I would probably eliminate that clause as well. Um, I forget which one it was. I think it was number two. Um, C2. And, yeah, and I, 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 think, I think making things mandatory as opposed, you know, there's a lot of shalls and musts. I think it's, if, if we're going to keep it, it, it needs to be, have more flexibility. But I'm leaning towards David's suggestion that we have a comprehensive contracting policy that this is part of and um and is more general um our initial concern was about proprietary information getting out that's another issue separate from this and there's other ways of dealing with it i think so i'm not i'm not enthused it, although there's lots of craftsmanship in the Thing, and then I amended it and made it even prettier. I, I'm not partial to it at the moment. Uh, Tim, I see your hand. Yeah, I just wanted to ask um, 
would this be best to i mean it's a good good um, it's a good document and good revisions talk and everything but would this be best with uh, a legal expert kind of uh, inking this uh, in a more protective way for both contractors and subcontractors if we want to pay someone to do that just didn't know if it was in our best interest to uh, make sure it's uh, not forgetting about anything that could leave the organization vulnerable so if i mean if someone's willing to write the overall contractor policy and incorporate this in there or some variation <clears throat> i think we need to have one of those and i think we need to have one of those immediately immediately i mean within the next few weeks because we are going to be engaging in a contract hopefully quite soon um and I'm hoping that we can have elements of this, even though it's not a current policy that covers everything, incorporated into any new contracts that we sign with, for example, you know, the new uh, or potentially new uh, project manager. So if anybody wants to step up and do some of that work or go find a template or modify something that's out there, um, yeah, please, please do that. This is this was my this was my crack at it. And yeah, feel free to run with this and go in whichever direction you like. I saw your hand, Siobhan. Yeah. Um, I guess I'm going to address the gorilla. It's there. It's not just about proprietary information. It's about ensuring a certain level of comfort with the people who are going to be working on our plans and our actual work and I think it's a valid concern that if somebody's membership on the board has been rescinded for cause that they've kind of that we shouldn't be obligated to work with them if we don't want to and that we shouldn't want to work with them because they were rescinded for cause and and I'm concerned because it I feel like it's naive to think that we wouldn't necessarily be targeted because we're unimportant or we're small or this is a little state I think it's and I don't see this as necessarily but again, I, I do, I appreciate the, does this put us in a strange legal situation? Um, I don't know. Uh, I know that, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I guess I'm done. Ken? Yeah, I, I'll be even stronger in that. I, I, I don't like the document. Um, when we have a relationship with a contractor, and we'll use the recent experience as the example, um, we hired Fred, um, and I, I, I think the product from Fred was excellent. And I don't know if, if the person we're not we're avoiding talking about by name was contracted to Peter, but also the product by Peter was excellent. And one of the things about, about you know, providing a contract is, we want to vet that organization and the work that they do. And in both cases, if indeed he was contracted sub to, in both cases, and I don't know if he was, um, they knew damned well who they were working with. And the product that we received was a high quality product. That's what I'm interested in. I do not want to micromanage contracts because we had a history. And I believe me, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna defend individual that we're not speaking of. Um, he's a pain in the ass and, and David and I have been working with him for more than 30 years and um, he's a pain in the ass. And, but, every, but contractors, uh, you know, we're a small world and if he can provide them a, a service and allow them to provide a quality product, I'm, I, I'm not going to get in their way. So, I, yeah, and I read this and it, and I'll say it reads petty. I mean, cause I, especially if people understand what we're trying to do, it's petty and we got to get over that part of our history. So I definitely do not agree with the direction of that document. 
so if, if, if I could address that, because I, that petty comment is, is, is addressed to me, and that's fine. But I think, I think there's an honesty gap. I would say what's more petty is when you have behind the scenes emails saying, make sure that Jeremy's not CC'd, make sure that Jeremy doesn't know I'm working on this. You know, that, that's petty. And if oh, and, and I will not defend that individual for being petty. Oh, he's well, hold on, no. in space. But but Ken, you were part of this. You were engaged, and you were not sharing information that would have I would have expected you to share. Frankly, so there's an honesty gap, and I'm this is this was my attempt again. Let's massage it. Let's modify it. This was my attempt to make sure that we have. We don't have honesty gaps and that we don't have information gaps with the people that we contract with. Yeah, I, I don't feel that I was being dishonest in any way, shape or form. I received that email as you did. And he, he, he I'll say, um, he put that clause in there as he does so many times because uh, he wishes to avoid being exposed. And I've seen that literally a hundred times. And you're right; I don't go telling everybody uh, the the pieces of work that he's involved with. He, as you folks may know, he has crafted much of the legislation um, that has directed our work. And I have not told a lot of people that he is crafting that legislation because I know their reaction. You know that, that that's four strikes against him, and therefore four strikes against the product. I'm a great believer in looking at the quality of the product. Michael? Let's suppose that, um, I'm gonna pick on you, Greg. Greg Kelly and the, the powers that be in Barry have a falling out and they remove him from our board out of spite, even though we think Greg is a crackerjack great guy and we would like to keep working with him. <laughs> <laughs> this policy would forbid us from doing that. And that's what I was looking at when I was looking at it. I wasn't looking at it in terms of the individuals. I was looking at it as policy and how it works and whether it's appropriate or not. And that's what that's why I had an objection to that clause. Um, it, it, it's mandatory and it's very specific. And I, I don't... I. I don't see the value of it in a policy. I can see when we're negotiating with a contractor, we might have certain requirements of that contract, particularly if we know of some relationships, but to have every contractor come to the board and say, I'm gonna use this, this uh, lawn maintenance crew and this cleaning crew and these people who look at poles and these people who do that, it, it, it's cumbersome and I, I don't know that it's necessary as long as we get them to promise to protect our information and 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 we have the right to request information as opposed to um, require that every subcontractor be voted on by the board. I just think it I, I don't have a, an objection to us having some control over subcontractors. I just have an objection to going that far. I guess that's where I'm at. Okay, Siobhan. So I can I can agree with that. I can agree with that. I would be happy with just clause two, because I'm talking about we're talking about somebody who did harm to the board. We're not just talking about oh we don't like him or oh he's icky or he's a pain in the ass. He did us harm. And that has consequences. And one of those consequences should be that they don't get to work with us. They don't get to work with our contractors because they harmed us. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. No, other way around. Reverse so, that. So but I can, it, can I answer to this, Siobhan? Can I, with all respect? The, the problem is you're over-focusing on the harm and you're generalizing the benefit you still may get from the individual, even if they're dislikable. And it's hard to generalize that in a way that you do in a policy document. And you're putting us in a weird space as an organization, and you're also empowering the individual you dislike because you're overinflating 
their negative value and threat. We need to focus on what we're doing as an organization, the work products, and the contracts we have, having generalized processes in place that lead to success and move on. Um, I, I, I have really been struggling with how to express this in a way that doesn't immediately set all of you on edge. Um, I've kind of touched on this in the past in meetings, but in my opinion, it is continuing to work with people and not giving them consequences for their actions that makes them continue to behave in such ways and continues to let them to harm because as long as they can make themselves useful, as long as there's a few people who are willing to stand up and say, yeah, you know, he's kind of a pain in the ass, but boy, he does good work. It gives them permission to keep doing those things that they do. And this is not, this is not just, you know, this, this granted is kind of, it's not like he was punching us in the throat or anything, but, but the, the, when it was discovered, I, you know, I was at the meeting, several of you were at the meeting when this was discovered. And I remember what happened and what was said and what wasn't said. There's, there's never been any expression of regret um, in writing for what happened or anything, no attempt at restitution. And so I see no reason to think that there's any change except, so, this is, so he does good work, but other people do good work. Is he the only person who does good work? It, it's, I just feel like if there's no consequences for this, then it just, it doesn't, yeah, never mind. Let's move on. We will, uh, yeah, Phil, and then we're going to, uh, uh, the, we'll move on to the next thing. Yeah, I, will, I have to agree with um, Sharon about this. I think that, you know, continuing to um, use someone or either directly through a contract or subcontract who falls into that category is kind of like positive reinforcement for bad behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's certainly nothing that I would support and would prefer to see the kind of policy that Jeremy's actually drafted here that's, um, that does have a lot of shalls and do's and don'ts. Uh, remember, policy can always be waived or it can be modified if, in fact, we feel that it's too stringent. But we, you know, we do have to start somewhere, and I generally like um, what that first draft um, is like. Uh, yeah, the tone of it maybe needs to be changed a little bit, maybe needs to be depersonalized, but I think the, the intent of it is the right place for us to be. And I see David shaking his head. Okay. But, yeah. Um, so, I, you know, so I, David, yeah, I we're think we're all entitled to opinions. Huh? I just say, we're all, we can all have our own opinion. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but I think, uh, Jeremy, as you said, this is probably a first reading. We're going to do some work on this and bring it back um, for final consideration at, a, at another meeting. So um, we can all sit on it for a while. Okay. Thanks, Phil. Let's move on. Uh, discussion of state and federal funding, uh, including auctions and line extensions. Um, this is an item that Alan wanted me to bring up, and I, th and I will just briefly mention um, – um, you probably all saw that the northern border grant that we applied for, we did not get that. Um, the um, wireless grant that we applied for um, is being counted, is being included in round two. If it is not funded, I was told explicitly it will be, it will be funded, it, it will re be reviewed for round three. Um, okay. I can tell you the amount I did not, I sort of collapsed exhausted after a crazy long day on Friday. Let me see if I can find, oh, find that. 
four hundred twenty-five, I think. Four sixty-five. Yeah, it had to be bumped up because the numbers. Um, that when I when I reran the numbers with Fred's model, uh, it was it was slightly different. So I just did the dotting I's, crossing T's, and I found out it wasn't four twenty-five when I went back and ran his uh, the capital expense uh, spreadsheet thing that he had. So um, it was a scaled down. So the, the the project team agreed on a scaled down proposal that was not quite so ambitious and that would only require us to work with uh, Cloud Alliance uh, and only had us putting up our own polls. So not citing any sort of actual, um, not putting any radios up on polls uh, or structures that were owned by uh, other entities. These would be all, all brand new. Um, Alan, anything else that you wanted to talk about with this? I have a couple other kind of fill in the blank sort of thing, but I'd... Um, yeah, let me just, you, you can hear me okay? Yep. So I asked Jeremy to put this on because I've begun to worry as the VT Digger article sort of suggested that the CUDs are either advertently or inadvertently being used as fall guys when something might go wrong with how this is going to work out for the state. And I think it's a scenario that if my worst nightmares become true, it could lead to CUDs falling apart simply because we begin to feel like we're skeletons with no meat and yet people still are going to be picking at our ability to get some meat on our bones. And I feel that way because of, I think what I've described before is going on in a portion of Worcester where there's uh, an individual who's started a, an effort to try to get at least 10 people together to uh, encourage Comcast to extend their lines past their houses so they can connect up to Comcast and use the $3,000 incentive from the state to get $30,000 to Comcast. And those are exactly some of the addresses that I know we had hoped to pick up um, when we do a build out uh, on West Hill in Worcester. So when I when I think about about a specific circumstance that's happening in my town, when I see that VT Digger has actually put together an article in that they posted online that flat out said that the CUDs are feeling really squeezed and like they're they they might end up having a more a more difficult job than anybody realized. It really made me begin to think that is this an existential moment <laughs> for those of us who are trying to use a, um, a, a a public mechanism to see that broadband is provided to all rural areas in our part of the world? You know, we haven't even talked about what the impact of the of the SpaceLink program, which apparently is moving forward, as far as I can tell what that might be on the whole thing. All of this boiled down to me, I, when, whenever I, I get to a point like this, I try to make myself think, if I were a journalist, what would I write as a report of where we're at right now? And I think that actually would be a practical thing to do because I feel like we need to report to our communities okay. what we've been up to, what we've learned, what we're trying to do, you know, it's it's news that we did not get the Northern Borders uh, grant. Uh, it's it's news that we that we're applying for the wireless grants. Um, uh, it's 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 news that we're continuing with our plans to still try to provide service throughout our area. But I think I think we need to get the word out and to let people know that we still exist and we're still operating and we still have the plan that we've told them many times before we have. The last thing I wanted to say is I actually didn't realize that there were two levels of auctions going on. I realized there was the FCC federal auctions, but I didn't realize the state was also running auctions. And I have to tell you, I, 
I, I'm, I've just become so cynical about the state's ability to carry through on a mission of providing high-speed internet to all parts of Vermont. This has been going on for almost 15 years now, and it just doesn't seem to be getting any better when mechanisms are set up that really make it difficult for public entities like us who are committed to the public responsibility of getting internet to everybody when our job appears to be made more difficult by the rules of some of the grant programs or auctions that the state has set up. Um, so I'll stop. That's, that's why I wanted this, this item put on the agenda. If nothing else, I think we ought to figure out a way to have something drafted that we can all use to send out to community members via Front Porch Forum or something like that. So I have, I have a, two quick things before I call on Ken and Michael and Chuck. Uh, the first of all, this, the journalist that, that wrote this Digger article was citing an old, old set of comments. This was something that we sent in in response to the Emergency Broadband Action Plan, which you know the department put together quite quickly. Um, and that was supposed to inform how the legislature was going to uh, react to this and our um, our response to that also informed where, where they how they responded to this. I expect Ken will be able to provide us a bit more context in terms of providing um, information out to our communities. Again, all volunteers, you know, um, last week was more than a full time job doing this for me personally, and I'm sure it was for several other people as well. Um, and there's not that much more. You know, blood to be you know squeezed out of the stone. Um, that said, project manager sounds like a wonderful first thing to get the project manager acquainted with the communities and say, hey, we're doing these things. Put something together so we can make sure that everybody gets this out to the community, you know, by Friday or whatever sort of arbitrary deadline we put there. So, um, Ken, Michael, then Chuck. Yeah, so the Telecom Advisory Board met today, and tomorrow the Public Service Department will release the first round of awardees, and I encourage you all to take a look at that list and, and be encouraged by it. Um, uh, you know, I can't, can't provide the details, but be encouraged by it. I think it positions our application, um, you'll, you'll get a sense of, of the relationship between our application and those applications that are awarded. Second, is, and I don't know exactly when this is, but hopefully within the next week, the department's also gonna provide a half million dollars to a consultant to help with emergency planning or recovery planning. And, and one of the emphases in that activity is to support CUDs. Um, they're, they're, it, it, one of the topics, and it's kind of my pet topic, is the relationship between establishing uh, stronger fixed wireless solutions and the ultimate build out of fiber. And I'm hoping that this consultant can work with the CUDs to help us recognize a path or a strategy or some principles to allow for and encourage that say, medium term path where folks may be getting improved fixed wireless signal, um, but not to the preclusion of them getting a fixed solution, a fixed wired solution. Um, and then in terms of the auction, the auction, the auction has no basis. I mean, the, the auction was an idea. Um, there is no funding, and I don't think the Public Service Department is gonna pursue that auction um, unless they get $100 million, which they're not gonna get from the legislature for sure. Uh, if they get it from Congress, I think reopens the question as to what the auction, auction really is and the relationship to CUDs. Uh, I do believe the Public Service Department has a commitment to CUDs. I, again, the line that I appreciated um, Commissioner Tierney uh, voicing was that the CUDs can play the same role that the care, the, um, the, national level carriers played in terms of telephone service. We are the carrier of last resort. And what that means is we get the public subsidy to provide connections to all of those places that are economically um, challenging to assist. So I think, again, I think she carries that philosophy with her that that's a role that CUDs play. And so I think some of the pieces, you know, they're, they're working towards, um, but I'm not nearly as discouraged 
by some of the recent activities as I've been with activities of a few months ago. So um, again, to keep, keep, a, keep your eyes and ears open for the announcements tomorrow, but again, I, I, I'm encouraged by what those announcements represent. Okay, Michael. And uh, also I posted something in the chat if you want to uh, take a peek at that. So um, I understand Alan's frustration. Um, and, and unfortunately, that's sometimes what journalism can do. The, the purpose of that article that got widespread view was to advance the idea that the NEK Collaborative is pushing forward and wants to make have some influence on some policy and so they they brought up as as both ken and jeremy said they brought up some old policy that may may become real at some point and pointed out that that policy is probably not best for the communities that it's not best for the CUDs or the small providers, that it might advantage the big providers. And that's what I believe Alan was seeing and was worrying about. I think the purpose of the article was to influence the policymakers, the legislators, to move away from that. And it probably had some of that effect. Um, but it also had some errors in the article. You know. Those of us who are really in the know about this stuff often see that there's some misunderstandings. Reporters are not experts in all the fields they report on, and they do their best. And so that article wasn't a perfect representation of the situation. And I'm sorry it had um, a depressing effect, but um, there may be a reverse auction it might be really wonderful if um, only community-based providers can participate. Or it might be even better if CUDs are exempted from it or aren't given direct grants, which is something we recommended in the legislature. Um, we'll see. We don't have the state, as Ken said, we just don't have that money. So it's not going to happen. That auction is not happening until Congress appropriates billion, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars um, for infrastructure. And until the Senate flips, that's not going to happen. So we have to wait. Um, I, I share Ken's optimism. I think we are moving in the right direction. It's frustratingly slow, but we are. And um, um, I think there's going to be, it's not just fixed wireless. It's going to be a lot of fiber coming soon. Um, that's all. Thanks. All right, Chuck. Um, I want to echo Alan's sentiment, uh, but in doing so, I want to point out that I was actually planning on calling together the Communications Committee next week for explicitly that purpose, because it's high time we do another update out to the community. Um, and so look for that coming. Those of you who are members of that, it will likely be uh, later in the week, since we do also have uh, another governing board meeting early in the week. Um, but I, I do want to get something out by end of next week, early following that addresses what we've been up to, because it's been about three weeks, three to four weeks, I think, since we sent the last one out. Hey, Chuck. Go ahead. Yeah, let me, what, yeah, look, let me go ahead and draft up something short that could just be a starting point maybe for us to discuss I love that. When, when you call the communications meeting you know while i have this stuff in my head it might be helpful just to have something on paper to talk about that would be an absolutely fabulous guiding cornerstone for us to have that conversation so thank you uh if you if you are able to put that together it would be much appreciated right. yeah sure just give me a couple of days once i get back to back in state i'll 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 do it, and it won't be long, so don't expect much. But I think it would help just to have just to have some some footing under us to begin a discussion. I can do that. Great, thank you. Th thanks, Alan. Uh, David. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremy just posted the link to the governor's budget that he submitted today, and he included in there two million dollars for grants to the CUDs 
to be used. Well, I didn't say what to be used for, but we certainly could use it to start our first build. Yeah, that I, was. That, I think that, it's intended for matching instead of the NBRC money. Right. <laughs> Thank so, you. So, so kind of a kind of a whiplash of funding right now, right? It's like, oh, now now we're depressed that we didn't get that funding, but surprise, we may end up having the funding to to run it after all. Um, so not not all this lost. All right. Uh, anything else that folks want to talk about with um, state and federal funding? I think um, it would be valuable given the the governor's um, the budget that I posted in the chat. Um, I think it'd be valuable if you have a favorite legislator or three, make that call. Um, because the the budget's going to get crafted in the next well they they get they get back a week from today and how long are they in session for what two weeks three weeks if that yep it's going to go fast so get them get them on the phone you know and tell them how important it is, is that we that we especially CV Fiber um, get access to this especially because we did not pull down the northern border money and this is going to set us back quite a bit I think so yeah put on your your advocate hats and and do that if you would please uh, all right next uh, appointment of an executive director um, oh, actually or maybe going back Siobhan sorry I just wanted to say what exactly am I asking to be part of it I, I didn't really understand this budget sure thing here sure so so the, so the governor proposed a budget to the legislature it came out today and some of right. his, some of the things that are listed as his quote unquote governor's initiatives these are things that he says he wants to spend in the budget should the legislature approve it and he has two million dollars set aside specifically for and I quote from the PDF that I linked there for grant distribution to CUDs for broadband and I think um, I, I, Where I, is that in there, though? I'm not. Page, page two. two. Oh. <laughs> okay. Never mind. Answered. <laughs> Sorry. There you go. So that that page two, and um, yeah. So sh they hopefully will will approve that because that's going to let us. That's going to let uh, Kingdom Community Broadband. That's going to let DV Fiber. It's going to let a lot of CUDs that are poised, that are close, that are ready to be able to use that and really start building. So it was very, very encouraging to see that, that message. Yeah, I just hadn't scrolled down. I'm, what a newbie error, I'm sorry. So it's all good, it's all good. All right, um, appointment of an executive director. And um, so I will turn this back over to you, Siobhan, in a second. Um, I don't think that we got the information to you all fast enough to be able to, um, have you make a um, make a good decision about this? Maybe I'll just talk about how uh, Siobhan made this work. Thank you for all of your work with that, by the way. That was a lot of stuff done very quickly. Siobhan called references. Siobhan set up all of the um, um, all of the interviews, um, and we kind of talked out all the applicants that uh, that submitted resumes to us. And uh, Siobhan and I and Greg sort of uh, individually back and forth or whatever kind of decided on three. And those um, those were all local folks and they were all, uh, honestly, I, I mean, I, and I'll let Greg and Siobhan, you know, talk about it too. I think I think they were all good candidates. I think we would be served well by, by any of them. Um, Siobhan has a ranking because she was the only one to have seen all three of the interviews. Um, I saw two, and Greg, you also saw two, right? That's correct. Um, so, sent you the, um, you should have gotten the, the resumes and such. Um, so, yeah, Siobhan, if you want to take it from here. So, yep. one, one question. Um, if, if we're going to get into names or any qualities, we should be in executive session, Siobhan? That, that, that's, that's true. So, I was actually just about to say that. <laughs> Should we go into ex executive session? Yeah. So, uh, do we need a vote on that, or do we say we're going in an executive session because we're talking about personnel matters? Yeah. So, yeah. and then there has to be a vote. Yep. Okay. So, so I I move that we uh, go into executive session subject to one VSA 
313 sub A sub 3. Let me paste this into the chat. To discuss the appointment, employment, or evaluation of a public officer or employee, in this case, um, um, our project manager, um, we will make any sort of final uh, hiring or appointments outside of executive session, which uh, we we may get to that point tonight. It's totally possible. My instinct is that we probably we probably won't, unless one of them jumps out at you and you're like, oh yeah, we definitely got to go with them. All this right, is so. Alan. I'll motion to go into executive session for the reasons cited by Jeremy. All right, I will second that then. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed or that want to do a roll call? Okay, and we are in executive session. So if um, those folks, Parayar and uh, Sam Rosenberg, thank you, Sam, and Orca, if you could disconnect now. Um, I don't expect we'll have any action at the end of this. I will, con I will resume my recording afterwards, but I'm going to go stop the... All right, so we're going to give three minutes starting now to let folks um, let folks come back in. I started the recording. The meeting is unlocked. If anybody would like to rejoin us, they can. Um, the only Jeremy, item. Yeah, go you're, ahead. Um, you're you're going to make sure that somehow we'll be able to see the interviews online. To solve the problem of our not being able because I, I I agree with people who have said it's important for them to actually see the person talking in an interview. That's true for me as well. And I would not want to make a decision or even say, I, 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 I can't choose among them without seeing the interviews. Okay, so, so. Yeah, just the go to meeting records audio only. Ooh, I didn't know that. Yes, so. Well, that's halfway there. I, I, I still want to at least be able to hear that. That's. Just, I, I want some. I want some real contact, either through voice or through mm -hmm. visual images of the person speaking, because to me, body language and the way people speak is really says a lot about them. Mm -hmm. Okay, Tom. Just a question about executive session and chat. As far as if someone joins back in, is the chat blank for them that they don't see? Like there, we have names listed and so forth. I, I. Ooh, good call. I believe they, they only see the stuff that comes in after. So if, Anybody if, want to volunteer to drop off and join back and confirm? Yeah. Why, don't you, why don't you do that? We got a couple, we got a minute or so, if you can. Okay. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just getting the email out for just a moment. So, David? Well, yeah, the only thing I, I, I think we ought to need, if we need to figure out as a group, is does this poor person respond to twenty people, or is it the executive committee, or is it the director? So, so this is this is something that actually got asked in in a, one of the interviews, and the way that the job description was uh, was um, written is that it would they would respond to the executive committee uh, and or the business development committee. We could probably um, one of the things that I that I said that we would need to do fairly quickly would be to. Um, make a concrete decision about um, a contact policy. What's the, what's the process? Yeah. So we can't have every one of the delegates sending the person <laughs> things to do. I mean, that happens with town administrators, you know, and that's that's kind of okay when there's five select board members. Um, but when you have a larger city council or something, you don't you don't just do that. Uh, what's the what's the verdict, Tom and or Chuck? Okay. Yeah, can't, cannot see anything. Yeah. Great. All right. Great. All right. So we will wait another minute or two. And as far as um, what gets recorded, does the chat show up somewhere that we are saving that for, like during regular public portion of the meeting? Uh, and it, so are we keeping tabs on where to stop recording and where to continue recording? Yes. I mean, I, I, um, whoever the organizer is for the go to meeting or whoever the, the current presenter is gets a copy of the, of the chat log. And actually it's possible. It's possible that you have a copy of your, of the chat log. 
um, if you go, it would be in your, um, it would be in your, on Windows, it would be in your documents. So just your, what that folder, be as an RTF file. If it's not in there, then it just, then it just lives with the organizers. And for the record, it still says the round three proposals are still set at, uh, although they haven't updated since last week. It's August 21st. Question for Ken. Can you hear me, Ken? No. Um, did the advisory committee approve the CCI project in Elmore and Wolcott? If they didn't, that it has impact on our wireless project. That's why I'm asking. Um, it, <laughs> I can't tell you. We, we approved the same list that the Public Service Department provided us. Um, um, but take a look at it tomorrow. Um, yeah, I can't, okay. I'm not supposed to say, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm aware, I'm aware of three that were approved, but so I thought maybe the list was out, so. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, so I think we've given it a solid three minutes. I think Chuck, you left or you sent that at like 7:38. I've got 7:41. Um, so if you want to go ahead with your motion, that that would be awesome. Okay, uh, motion to table uh, further discussion around candidates for the project management role until next week. Okay. okay. Okay, and uh, second. Okay, Ray seconded it. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed or anyone wanting a roll call? Okay, so um, we'll schedule another meeting for next week. So that is August 25th, same bat time same that place although it would be a different meeting room um all right let's uh let's we won't bother with the uh the round table and i move that we adjourn okay oh hold on okay oh. so so it's moved and seconded david's gonna get the last word well i, I we didn't bring up uh we had a meeting with WEC last week and i'm saying we're making progress i think they're getting closer but I think they're probably going to end up just running the fiber and not doing any connections. But the good news is they need fiber to go to every house so they can keep the meters and the whatever. So it's, it's an interesting hybrid that we may end up building while working with them. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Cool. All right. Anything else? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And... Unless there are opposed.